أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي إن شاء الله today I will be talking about the significance and the importance of intention Sayyiduna Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates Innama al-a'malu bin niyyat That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said Indeed every action is based upon a person's intention Wa innama li kullim rimanawa And indeed for every individual is what he intends Faman kant hijratuhu ila Allahi wa rasulihi Fahijratuhu ila Allahi wa rasulihi Whoever migrates for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then indeed his migration is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُسِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِهُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا حَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ And whoever migrated for dunyawi reasons, for the worldly reasons, or to go for a woman, i.e. to marry her, then for him is what he intends. This is the first hadith that Imam al-Bukhari writes in his al-Jami, known as al-Sahih al-Bukhari, upon the advice of Imam Abdul Rahman al-Mahdi, rahimahumullah, who says that every book should start with this hadith due to intention being so significant. Any good thing that a person does in his life will only have a long-term effect on him and he will only reap the full rewards of it if his intentions are clear. For example, once upon a time, there was a king and a scholar. The scholar and king were very close. They would spend a lot of time together. They would meet up ever so often, and they would, um, they would converse, they would talk to each other. And the king really enjoyed this. Now, there was a minister of the king who observed this, and he saw that the king enjoyed being in the company of the scholar. So he began envying the scholar and he decided to conspire against him. So one day he went to the king and said that the scholar behind his back had been going around spreading news to the people saying that the king has bad breath. And the king then heard this and then the minister went to the scholar and said to the scholar that the king finds bad breath repulsive, i.e. The, uh, the scholar was told by the minister that the king thought he had bad breath. So the minister told the scholar to cover his mouth when he was to meet the king next whilst he was talking to him. So basically the minister tried to play both the king and the scholar off against each other. So when the king and the scholar met again, the scholar covered his mouth like this while speaking to the king. The king observed this and believed that the minister was telling the truth and that the scholar actually thought he had bad breath. So the king, he got angry. He began to write a letter to the chief of army, of his army, saying that kill the sender of this letter, then skin him and fill his skin with straw. The king sealed the letter and, told, and gave it to the scholar and told the scholar to go send it to the chief of army, of his army. And on the way, the scholar met the minister who thought that the letter was written in favour of the scholar because the minister had no idea what was inside the letter. He thought that the king must be sending the scholar with a letter saying good things about him. So the minister insisted to send the letter to the chief of his uh, of the king's army so uh, but the scholar said no i have been instructed to send this letter so i will do so but the minister uh, insisted that he wanted to send the letter so the scholar said uh, okay and then he gave it to the minister to go send so when the letter reached the chief of the king's army he read the letter and the minister was present at the time the minister said the minister now knew what was inside the letter and the minister said that this letter was meant to be sent by the scholar. It was not meant for me. But the chief of the army, he said 
nor I've been given strict instructions to kill the sender of this letter, skin him and fill his skin with, with straw. So the chief did so. And once um, the skin of the the skin of the minister reached the king, the king then realized all along that the minister had lied and his heart was filled with envy for both the king and the scholar. So we learn from this that if someone has bad intentions, if someone um, envies someone and they plan to uh, conspire against someone in, in any in any anything they do in their life, if they have not if they have not got good intentions, then the outcome will not be correct. There's another story of two brothers who were living in a building of some sort. Um, there were two brothers who shared the same building and there were two floors. On the top floor lived one of the brothers who outwardly performed good deeds. On the outward, if anyone saw him, they would have said he's a pious person. But inwards, he was a different, it was a different matter. Whereas the brother who lived on the bottom floor, both outwardly and inwardly, he was committing sins. He was drinking and such and such. So one day the shaitan went to the brother on the upper floor, the one who was outwardly good. He went, the shaitan went to the brother on the upper floor and whispered to him saying, you have held yourself back for so long. You have uh, been good all this time. So why don't you go and join your brother on the bottom floor? I commit bad, bad sins um, and maybe you can repent afterwards. So after the uh, brother on the upper floor considered what the shaitan had told him, his nafs, his ego and his, um, his desires overwhelmed him and he decided to join his brother on the bottom floor. At the same time, um, the brother on the lower floor, who was outwardly and inwardly, he was op openly sinning. The night before, he had been drinking. So when he woke up, he was in a state. He had impurity all over himself. And he thought to himself, look, I am such and such of age. And how long am I going to carry this on for? Maybe I should go and uh, join my brother on the upper floor and repent and make, uh, make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. So he cleaned himself and he was ready to go upstairs. He was ready to uh, meet his brother on the upper floor. So when both of the brothers on the different floors, once they came out of their rooms and they were going down the stairs and the lower brother going up the stairs, they met each other. And uh, because the brother on the lower floor had been drinking the night before, he was, he was still not fully with it as it were. So he felt dizzy and he fell. And the other brother fell at the same time. He fell with him. So the person, the brother on the lower floor, who was openly sinning all of his life, he had the intention to go and join his brother on the upper floor and repent for his sins. So he died with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was, he, was, uh, he was not punished once he passed away. Whereas the brother who on the outward was performing good all of his life, but then was intending to go and commit sin with his other brother on the lower floor. He intended to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he died with that intention and he was punished for it in his grave. So we learn from this that a person can do the actions of the people of Jannah all of his life. But if his intentions are wrong, then his ending will lead, to, lead him to hell, like discussed in the previous video. And if what he was doing outwardly was not for the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleasing him and, had, and he had ulterior motives, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree for his reality, i.e. who he was really on the inside, to become apparent to the people. And he will have a bad ending, i.e. he will have a bad death. So we should always stay true to ourselves and remember the purpose that we have been placed on this earth for please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to refrain from the waswasa of the shaitan. I pray that first of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts what I have said today and gives me first of all the tawfiq to act upon what I have said today and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
forgives me for any mistakes I have made and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows me to keep my intentions pure and clean and truly and solely for the purpose of pleasing him. Ameen. Wa ma'alayna al-balag. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.